Berserk to me is too much of a manga masterpiece to truly be adapted into a anime. However, I think that the Golden Age arc, whether you're talking about the movies or the 90s anime adaptation, is perhaps one of the only expectations to this rule. I spent like the last week reading, reading the Golden Age arc and just being in awe of the combination of the coach's artwork and breathtaking storytelling. The Golden Age arc has a proper beginning, middle, and end. The main elements of making a manga into a proper anime adaptation. Remember, the main purpose of an anime is to help enhance the manga, which is something that I think that the Golden Age anime does perfectly. Mainly for the fact that the Golden Age arc in itself could have been written as a self-contained story. Hence why, as I said, the anime adaptation is, well, most possibly the most perfect adaptation of any Berserk anime out there. And I feel like it should be the only adaptation that Berserk should get. So, um, I want you to sit back, relax, grab your favorite snacks, perhaps grab a iced tea or a coke, as we talk about and get into why the Golden Age arc is the perfect adaptation, the only anime that Berserk will ever need. Part 1. The intro. The beginning of Guts. Now, one of my first videos that I did was explaining why Guts is my favorite protagonist. And Guts himself is the reason why Berserk is in my top three favorite series of all time. I fell in love with Guts in the Black Swordsman arc, but the Golden Age arc really took that love for his character to the next level. And, of course, like most of our favorite protagonists, we shall discuss the beginning of our favorite black swordsman, aka Guts's birth. In a way, you could say that Guts was born cursed, covered in literal guts, aka probably why his name is Guts, and blood, a child of death, for you see, Guts was not born in a happy world. He never knew his mom because his mom was already dead. So, maybe Guts was not meant to live such a happy life. And his birth, his birth, a cursive birth, one born of death and stench and rot. Something that no human coming into this world should have to go through. Perhaps that is the reason why Guts goes through so much. I don't know, but in a way, like I said, Guts was born a child of death. And the origin of Guts is perhaps why one could consider him a, a monster or curse. One who has only brought death around him. Guts was truly a monster born with an innocent soul. A soul that had to be tainted in order to survive. A soul with 
no choice. However, like most humans, Guts is a social animal by nature. Even though we may deny it, humans need other humans to survive. And what Guts truly needed was a figure of love and and acceptance. But he was never able to receive that. And the closest thing that he has received to a parent was Gambino. Yeah, Gambino, who was truly the father of the year. Giving a child guts the tools he needed to grow up. Grow up in a world filled with war violence. Why, it was to either kill or be killed. Only the survival of the fittest, only the strong could move on. However, what I mentioned before, the main thing that Guts needed was someone to love him, someone to accept him, a chance for him to be a child and to explore the world around him. Instead, he was taught hatred, while it was through Gambino who blamed him for the loss of his lover. Guts was only taught to be a weapon, born of guts and blood. It seems like our black swordsman was destined to be nothing more than a weapon. We see poor Guts. We see this poor child trying his hardest to connect with Gambino. Gambino, the man who should have been able to raise Guts in a much more lovely fashion. Gambino, the man who Guts wanted to acknowledge him, like how a father acknowledges his son, how a parent bonds with the child. Now, I want you to do me a favor, okay? I want you to imagine what would have happened if Guts was able to experience that type of of pride the same pride that a father has for his son what would have happened if guts was able to experience love and a connection with gambino as a parent and a what would have happened if we saw guts and gambino sharing laughter imagine seeing a bright smile on little Guts's face. Imagine, okay? But unfortunately, we don't get to see that, and Guts does not get to experience that. No. Instead of love, instead of a connection, instead of a family bond, Guts is denied a chance to form that main bond that he needed, Gambino. Why yes, as I said, Gambino is truly the father of the year. Now, I could have included Donovan with the whole Gambino part, but to me, Donovan represents something more dire. He represents the death of the childhood of Guts. Through Donovan, Guts experienced true horror of the Berserk world. His innocence, his childhood, it's shipped away from him. It's stolen from him. And this betrayal did not come from one person, but it came from two. Betrayed by his father, Gambino, the guy that he wanted to love him, the same guy that he wanted to share a connection with, and Donovan, 
a fellow mercenary, someone that on the battlefield, Guts would have had to um, had Donovan watch his back. Donovan is one of the most terrifying monsters that Guts has battled because unlike the God Hand and unlike Zod and unlike every other supernatural being out there, Donovan is quite terrifying because Donovan is real. He is one of the representations of a real life monster, someone who hunts and stalks and preys upon poor innocent beings like Guts. Because after all, he is the childhood killer. And just imagine, if Donovan did this to Guts, then there is no telling how many other victims are out there. It's quite a scary thought. Why it is through Donovan that we see Guts beginning to build up these walls. These walls that he has to um, build up in order to protect himself. Before, Guts was just a young boy. A boy who wanted to experience love, connections, friendship, family and a bond but now he no longer wants that our poor child this poor child no longer wanted to interact with the world around him he could no longer trust anyone around him because in his eyes everyone was seen as a monster and the thing that really hits this in the fields, it's the fact of Gambino was the one who gave in that puss, that puss that made poor guts grow up too fast. The question of why the betrayal, the the tears that you knew fell down guts's face when he heard what truly happened behind the scenes. As I said before. Guts was betrayed by his father and fellow soldier. And now, the only company that Guts can trust is his trusty big sword. Part 2 The Band of the Hawks Now, to the outside world, the Hawks are a group of money-hungry mercenaries low class with no true worth but the hawks are more than that they are truly a family unit matter of fact the hawks are perhaps one of the best side characters in any series side characters to me should be able to help with the main character the main character and his story however they should also have their own personality. Hence why I think that even to this day, the band of the Hawk are still loved. Just think of Judo and Pippin, right? Two lovely characters who, like I said, are still highly regarded despite them being side characters. The Hawks truly represent Guts trying to find his humanity. The same humanity that was stolen from him by his father and fellow mercenary. Seeing Guts slowly up seeing Guts slowly open up to the rest of the Hawks, we can finally see those bonds, those connections that Guts has always wanted and has always needed. Like I said before, humans are social creatures. We need a group to belong to. It doesn't matter if you are like the most 
introverted person out there, you still need someone to bond with, to connect with. In a way, it's human nature. And it is through the Hawks, this wonderful mismatch of characters, that we get to see Guts truly open up. We get to see him learn how to be human. We can see the walls, the walls that he has built to protect himself, slowly come down inch by inch. In other words, the love and the friendship of the Hawks is what made Guts feel human again. The core of the Golden Age arc is Guts and his relationship with other humans. Him trying to find meaning in this life. Him, like I said, trying to find those bonds. And he finds that with the Hawks. But I want to talk about the two main ones, which is Casca and Griffith. Now, for this section, I want to focus on Casca. The jealousy that Casca has felt for Guts, at first glance, may have been considered unneeded, but let's look at it through her eyes. Griffith was Casca's crush. I'm not going to say love because I think that Casca had like, let's say somewhat of a high school crush of the guy. Griffith was seen like as this cool, good looking figure. And so, Costco developed a, a crush on Griffith. So, here we have this complete stranger, okay? This barbarian, if you will, challenged the one person in which she held upon a pedestal. A stranger who was nothing more than a mere mortal. Seeing this lowly human gain Griffith's trust, his admiration, and his friendship. The type of connection that Casca has always wanted, but was never able to get. In other words, Casca felt replaced. And of course, jealous. Now, Guts, on the other hand, had no idea what was going through her mind. And I mean, how could he? Guts is not a mind reader. And so the bickering, the, comp the competition, the chance to win Griffith over. Guts didn't acknowledge this contest because I think for him, it really wasn't a big deal. But for Casca, she had to win. So, being able to see these two share such a wonderful experience is truly an amazing feeling. When they are able to just break away from the rest of the Hawks and War and Griffith. We get to see these two form such an amazing connection to the point of where they are able to share their bodies as one. And Gus is finally able to reclaim his innocence. This time he is able to give it freely to the person of his choice while Casca gets to see what type of person Guts truly is. It is through this, it is through Berserk, that we get to see one of the best romances in fiction because the two share a more realistic approach. The pair does not go through that love at first sight stage. And because of that, we get to see a love that is real. And I'm hoping to see a bit more of their relationship 
after I finish reading the Golden Age arc and get into the convention arc. Because it is through Casca that Guts is finally able to fall in love again. And it is through Casca that that tiny bit of hope, that tiny bit of light probably penetrated through Guts's Black Abyss heart. Griffith, the White Knight, the Angel, a god among mere mortals. Whereas Guts could have been considered cursed, Griffith is blessed. Guts is a monster, Griffith is the savior. So, when you combine these two together, you get one of the best friendships in manga. Yes, I did say friendship because the two did share such a wonderful bond. While Griffith was used to the constant praise and admiration, Guts was the first person to receive such feelings from him. Guts did not automatically praise Griffith, and I think that's the reason why Griffith took to him. In other words, by giving him a challenge and not placing him on this pedestal like so many others have done, Griffith was treated as a human. A human in which became Guts' best friend. Actually, it was more than that. It was like a a brother, if you will. Someone who Guts could have expressed his true self. And the same goes for Griffith. Why, it is through Guts that we get to experience Griffith's more human side. He is in a way playful, curious, and he has a childlike nature to him. We get to see this. We also get to see the playful side to Guts. And might I dare say, but their friendship was in a way quite adorable. Take for example this small panel that I'm about to be talking about. Sure, it's random and it really doesn't mean anything at the end, but just seeing the look on Griffith's face when he shows guts like a page in a book. You can't admit that through this, we get to see two guys just hanging around and goofing off. Something that both Guts and Griffith needed to be able to do. Seeing them joke and talk, like I said, it's a small panel but it is one of my favorites. Part 3, The Eclipse. Ah yes, the ending. And not a particular happy one. Seeing Guts go from not being able to bond with others, to find love and friendship, to, well, we all know what happens at the end. Through this, Guts experiences true loss. The loss of family and friendship, his first lover, and Griffith, a, a person that Guts says once again trusted daily. A person who once again 
has betrayed Guts. Someone that Guts might have considered somewhat of a brother, if you will. But three times now, okay? Three times now, Guts has been betrayed by his father, a, a fellow soldier, aka a fellow mercenary, and now someone that he probably considered a a brother to him. The lost anger, hatred, rage, just pure rage. It doesn't matter why Griffith did this. The only thing that does is knowing that Guts shall be turned into a monster with a innocent soul. I want you to imagine being in Guts' shoes, alright? Or armor, okay? But just imagine witnessing these people, your loved ones, being sacrificed. Imagine losing everyone you love, you cared about, being ripped apart, limbs tossed like like branches, guts everywhere. Now, I want you to imagine having the greatest mental breakdown. There is no sadness, no anger, no betrayal, no despair. Emotions cannot describe what you are going through. You will have felt empty, not feeling human, nor a monster, but a cell, a empty cell. But, same time, you have to ask, why is Griffith doing this? The dynamic between the two, as I said before, it's like a bond between brothers, which Guts is Griffith's only weakness, all right? He is a example of his human side. And I think that's why Griffith had to sacrifice the Hawks. He had to break free. The dreams, the ambition to one day rule his own kingdom were being threatened, threatened by a certain black swordsman. So, Griffith had to shed his humanity, even if it meant getting rid of Guts. Guts, the same guy that he admired. Guts, the only human to see Griffith's more childish nature. Guts and Griffith, the, the dark reaper of Griffith had to happen. He couldn't have an equal. He could not admire Guts. Griffith had to become Vimto in order to achieve his kingdom. He had to. He, he had to sacrifice his humanity to accomplish his dream. He had to turn in he had to turn to the God hand for help. Speaking of which, the God hand. Ah yes, these majestic beings in which as a newcomer I can't wait to learn more about them. I don't have that much to say about them, but I feel that they play a highly important role to this arc, specifically to Griffith. The God Hand appeared to a, a individual who is at their lowest point. Take for example, Griffith, who was broken um real no longer this savior type being his dream broken 
and in a sense has died. So when supernatural godlike beings offer you a chance, a second chance at life, a chance to become a more perfect being, would you not take that opportunity? Would you if it meant helping your dream? With one flick of the wrist, the God Hand has truly turned the world of Berserk around. Part 4 Why I think that the Golden Age arc is really the only anime adaptation. Okay, so after that long explanation of why I enjoyed the Golden Age arc, I wanted to talk about why this arc is such a perfect anime adaptation. Here in this wonderful arc, we get to see the beginning of Guts, the middle, and the end. As I said before, the Golden Age arc in itself could have been considered a whole manga series with like perhaps a couple of volumes. We get to see Guts grow up, find love, family, and we get to experience him lose it. It has, in a way, a perfect ending. Yes, the ending is not that of happiness, but not every ending has to have a happy one. Also, the Golden Age anime makes you want to explore the world of Berserk, like, like the lore of Zod and the Skull Knight, the mystery behind the God Hands. Will Guts and Casca ever be able to truly experience the love again? Will Guts be able to make bonds? Um, will he be able to connect with people? Will he be able to get his revenge? And last but not least, will the final countdown be between Guts and and Griffith ever happen? So that is the reason why I think that the, the Golden Age arc is truly the only adaptation that Berserk needs. It doesn't need to follow up on the other arcs because like I said it it has like a beginning, middle, and end. It tells the story perfectly and it makes you want to find out more. Which means that you will have to get into the manga, which in itself is truly a wonderful thing since Berserk is such a manga masterpiece. Not to mention the voice acting, the, o the OSTs. Reading Berserk while listening to Guts' thing, while listening to the OSTs is truly a wonderful, amazing ex experience, right? But, um, man, this is quite a video to write. I wanted to do something special for one of my favorite mangas out there, like top three. And I wanted to talk about my top pro tag. Anyway, I hope to bring you guys more berserk content. But anyway, this is Inks and Farewell, fellow struggler. <laughs>